Rosie. Welcome to Landscape Photography World. How are you going? Hi, Grant. Great. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure having you. Been a follower of yours for some time and really taken by some of your shots. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and how you got started in photography and in particular landscapes? I've been photographing since I was in school, so a million years ago. Started off with and printing stuff at school during mm-hmm. art classes and just progressed along the way, just doing amateur stuff, really taking photos of the kids at school and things like that. And then when I, my husband and I sold our business a few years ago and I jumped into photography because then I felt I had time to do it, time for myself, yeah. that I could learn some new things and explore the whole world of photography. Fantastic. So I guess with landscape photography in particular, why that as opposed to anything else? Or do you do a lot more that I... Yeah, I started in landscape photography, obviously, because there's a lot of beautiful stuff out there to shoot. Yep. But since doing that, I've I have gone into different genres. I like architecture. I like long exposure. I like astro a little bit. And I've started doing a lot of composite work. During COVID, I spent a lot of time learning things on the internet. And yeah, so I've gone down different paths. Okay. Take us back to the school days and learning the initial learning of the craft and everything. How much of that were you taking in at high school or were you just just casual about it and it just happened? And Pretty casual about it. You only had a roll of 24 or 36. Yep. You couldn't see the photo that you took until you got it printed. Mm-hmm. It was so limiting. So I've, I love digital. I just love being able to see what I've taken. I love being able to just take as many photos as I feel like. Yeah, I just... I would never go back to uh, the old way, although my daughter has my old camera and yeah. she loves she loves it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I come from a, a similar sort of time period in, in terms of photography and that agonising wait while you... Mm, very agonising. ...whether or not your shots were any good. <laughs> Half of them weren't, let me tell yeah. you. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. What, I guess, is your process for setting yourself a creative challenge? In terms of the creativity, where did it start to become that creative pursuit as opposed to more documenting life? And Okay, I guess that's exactly it. I, I thought I've got to do something more for me to get the photo to look the way I want it to look rather than just look like everybody else's. Sure. There's so many photographers out there taking photos and there's amazing photos out there. And I just wanted to find a way of using the photography to create something different and something that I really enjoy. And I've been friends with Mike Langford for a very long time. And his wife is Jackie Rankin. And she does a lot of multiple exposures. And I've done quite a few tours with them and know them pretty well. And she's always been inspirational to me in that regard. So I've gone down that path a little bit. And then from that, gone into composite work as well. Mm, Okay. Talk to me a bit about the multiple exposure stuff. I know not everybody's into that sort of thing, but what was it that relationship that sort of really sparked that interest in it? Or was it just Um, something that I think I've always something unique? Yeah, I think I've always liked that sort of quirkiness that it gives an image and it is tricky. Nothing, it works. It's not, oh, I'm taking a shot and I've got this exposure in this setting. It is a bit of a hit and miss kind of thing and I really enjoy playing around with that and just being a bit more creative and a bit different. Sure. How much are you doing in camera versus what you're doing uh, in Photoshop? Yeah. Probably 50-50. Yep, I, okay. do, I do a bit in camera, but I do like to do it on my computer as well because I can, I can get things lined up a bit better because sometimes yes. out in the field, things don't line up exactly properly. So, yeah, particularly if you're um, going handheld. Yeah. yeah, so I do a bit of both. Yeah. Do you set yourself goals and projects to work on? Um, 
Not really. Sometimes if there's a competition I want to enter, I'll try and do something. But more so, I look at the time of the year, the landscape, the lighting, just different things and try and capture things when they're happening. Sure. If it's a full moon or if it's a brilliant sunrise or something. And then I can use those images in different times. So it's not like I've got to, oh, this is what I'm going to do. It's just a bit more of a flow kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. So are you planning your shoots or are you more reacting to the landscape as you see it? A bit of both. I look and see what the sky is going to do in the mornings yep. and things like that. Actually, this morning I went to Coleroy and I wasn't really, I just didn't know what was going to happen. I got I was there. there yesterday, actually. Oh, I should have gone this morning. The <laughs> pool was getting emptied. Oh, wow. And it was a huge swell and yep. high tide was coming in. Oh, it was just brilliant. And then I got this red sky and, uh, yeah, I was, I was just like, yay, I scored today. Nice. <laughs> so I definitely got the red sky, but the pool wasn't being emptied. It, it, it was yeah. over full. I actually went for a swim in it uh, oh. after my shoot and it was a little bit hairy, actually. There was one yeah. I, I actually got almost washed over the wall. I couldn't believe that. It was crazy there this morning. Yeah. So I guess in, in terms of that planning, how much time are you spending in thinking about what it is and conceptualising the shot before you actually go out and take it? I don't know. Not a lot of it is just gut instinct and going with the flow. And I've got a trip coming up to New Zealand and I've been doing, I have been doing a lot of research as to where I'm going yeah. to go. And But when I get there, it's going to be, Whatever happens on the day, that's what yep. I get because travel photography, that's what it is. Yeah. But in you, saying you that. You get to sit there and pick and choose your weather. Yeah. Only but in a, saying that, I know I want to do this sort of thing with the location. I want to do multiple exposures. I look for where I can do that. And yeah. so there is a little bit of planning, yeah. yeah. How do you feel when you're out shooting? What's the feeling you get out of it? Like I'm like all over the place. Because I just want to take everything in. I'm, I think, yeah, the, like I just want to get everything. And sometimes I miss everything because I'm too focused on getting everything. <laughs> That's why I like going back to locations. Yeah. Because right. I'll see, okay, next time I go, I'll do this. Or next time I go, I'll do that. So I do going back to locations. Yeah, yeah. In terms of mastering your your craft, that's a key element of success in landscape photography, I think. What time do you put into that education process for yourself to understand how your field work and then your processing develops beyond just where you everybody starts off at the basics because mm. that, that's what you have to do. It's pretty rare that you see somebody pick up a camera and take a masterpiece. yeah. yeah. I, I guess in terms of that process of learning, what effort are you putting into that yourself? Oh, I have put in the last sort of four or five years a lot of effort in learning how to process images. I've always had a bit of an eye, like compositionally, of how to take a photo. Yep. And it has been a, a steady incline of learning. And during COVID, mm. I spent a lot of time learning stuff, learning new things, looking at other people's work and practising, practising, yes. Yeah, yeah, cool. In terms of that lifestyle choice, sounds like it was fairly easy for you to make that transition. You sold a business and therefore had the time and spare money to be able to do that. Yeah. How do you balance working on your photography with everything else in life though? I'm lucky I've got a fairly understanding husband because I do spend a lot of time on photography and I, honestly I could spend more. But, yeah, it's, it is it is easy to do because I am retired and yeah. I don't have any major commitments and I, I feel like I've earned it. Yeah. yeah. Are you trying to turn it into a business or is it just something to fill the the retirement hours. My husband would like me to have a business, but I don't really want the pressure. I just want to go out and enjoy it. And we, because of COVID, we couldn't travel, but we're traveling. Our plan is to travel a lot. And so I don't know that I'd be able to make a business out of it really. 
fun yeah, no. traveling. Okay. So. In terms of where, do you find where you live influences what you shoot and how you shoot? Oh, definitely. I live near Manly, so yep. I've got access access to the beach really easy. It's really easy to get there. It's really easy to get into town if I want to go into town and just catch the yeah. ferry. I do shoot a lot around the city and around the beaches. I'm really looking forward to going overseas and getting some different perspectives. Sure. Have you done much overseas travel in, in the past? Obviously, the past couple of years is uh, yeah. a bit moot, but the, the past few years? Yeah, we've done, we've done a lot. Our business was overseas. We went to China a lot and uh, that we have travelled a lot as a family as well. But now that I can photograph, I have done a few photo tours. I've okay. been to India. I've been to China on a photography tour. Been to Kashmir and Ladakh, New Zealand. I just went to Turkey for three weeks. And, yeah, so every opportunity that I can, I'd like to do a photo tour. Yeah, great. Do you have a favourite spot overseas and a favourite spot locally without giving any secrets away? <laughs> I really love North Korkor Pool. Yeah, yeah. I go there quite a lot. Any of the northern beaches I love. They're great. Yeah, overseas. The choice. Yeah. Overseas, I don't know, put me anywhere, I don't care. I'd be happy. <laughs> I think I like remote places. I like undiscovered places. I like a lot of minimalist stuff. So, yeah, take me anywhere. I don't care. Sounds great. Mm. <laughs> what, what's your most memorable photography experience? I think when I went to Kashmir and Ladakh, it was mm. an incredible place to go. We went up the highest navigable road in the world. We went to the lake at Srinagar and, and stayed on houseboats and went out on the little, I forget what they called, those little boats out into the marshes and things. Oh, it was just brilliant. Mm. Sounds I've been to Antarctica too. That was a oh, wow. phenomenal experience. Yeah, yeah I'd go yeah, back. Yeah. They're both Antarctica. places that I've not managed to get to yet, and yeah. Antarctica is definitely high on the on the bucket list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd love to go back there again, but I don't think I ever will. Of course, it's so expensive. Yeah, I know. That's that's the one thing that's making me bore because mm. there are other places I'd, I'd go to first that don't mm. cost quite as much. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. In terms of horror stories, have you got any really challenging shoots that you've had? I've had a few broken things, including yeah. my head. Oh. So I was in Italy in 2020, no, 19, anyway, and I was out on a balcony shooting the moon and I took a step forward and I fell off the balcony. It was about a oh, one no. and a half metre fall. And I had my 100 to 400 on my camera and I held it up so it didn't get damaged and I landed on my head. Oh, no. So I got taken in an ambulance to a helicopter, taken in a helicopter to the hospital. And I was in the hospital for a bit. I had the neck brace on and bandaged head and everything. But, yeah, I won't do that again. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. <laughs> Aside from not falling off balconies, what have you learned about the world through photography? I've learned it's just spectacular. There is so much beauty out there. And if everybody just got up for sunrise and just soaked it all in, we'd all be a happier place. Oh, I you know? don't disagree with you there. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. In terms of your, your process, you talked a little bit about how you get a, a little bit all over the place. Are you like that with your editing as well or is that a completely different sort of to your process? Yeah, no, editing I have a pretty good workflow. I did the Adam Williams Easy Way Photography okay. courses that well, probably everybody's done or everybody should do. That changed my life. He's a master. It was just eye-opening what his processes have done. And yeah. from his processes, I've been able to learn more and more things. I've got a few people on um, YouTube that I follow yep. that I learn stuff from. Yeah, it's just I do have a 
fairly standard process that I follow, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's great. How long would you spend on a shot? Oh, it can be a few seconds to an hour maybe. Just okay. depends, yeah. Some yeah. of the sizes get to be up in the gigabytes and I've got to go, oh, my God, and I've got to <laughs> decrease the size and everything because yeah. my computer's so old. Too many um, layers. Yeah, too many layers, especially in the composing sort yeah. of work. It just gets up there really quickly. Yeah, composite editing does does suck the uh, resources out of you. Yeah, yeah. Do you find that's something that relaxes you or is it something that stresses you out? Oh, no, I yeah, I love it. It's creating some new image is just, oh, what will I do here and what will I do there? And yeah. it just takes you off into another land of imagination. So, yeah, I really enjoy that. Fantastic. In terms of whether or not, sorry, I'll ask this again. Do you prefer taking photos with other people or alone? That's a pretty hard one because I do doing stuff alone, but I really enjoy it when I'm with a group. Yeah. And I've got a, a, a really fun group of friends that I've met through the Canon Collective. The Canon Collective used to be run. I met this group of people and before COVID, we used to go out every Wednesday morning and shoot sunrise somewhere. Nice. But since COVID, things have changed a little bit and we don't do it as often, but we do road trips or go away for weekends. So it is it is nice to do things with other people, especially in the dark because you're getting up at, in the crack of darkness and it can be scary as a woman on her own sometimes. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree there. I've spoken to quite a few female photographers that have said exactly the same thing. And yeah. I've got to admit, as a male photographer, it can be a bit sketchy when yeah. you're heading out with nothing but a headlamp, your tripod and a bag. Of... I always have my tripod at the ready just in case. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not so worried about getting attacked. I'm more worried about getting washed off a rock. So, <laughs> oh, yes, I've been in hairy places. My husband would kill me. Um... Yeah, my, my wife always says to me, ring me when you get there and we, <laughs> when you're leaving. Yeah. You do Tell me where you're going so she that. knows where to send the, the coroner. <laughs> oh, dear. I know, it's scary sometimes. Yeah. In terms of your social media presence, I've been following you for some time. <laughs> I know you had a bit of an incident a little while ago. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, so just before maybe October, I think, last year, I was hacked. For my mm. main photography account, I've got a few different ones for the different cool. styles of photography I do, but my main Rosie Photo account was hacked. And it was quite devastating, really. You just feel very out of control. I couldn't let any of my friends, followers know what was going on. Yep. And this person was posting photos saying, oh, I've bought a new house and go and get onto Bitcoin and all these silly but things you wouldn't do that I wouldn't do so I, I had all these people contacting me saying oh Rosie you've been hacked and everything and it's just it's just awful and I sent messages to Instagram and I went on the Instagram and tried to do all the things that they said when your account was hacked mm -hmm. and yep. nothing really worked but luckily I had a friend that worked for Meta oh nice that and helps. yes I'm 100% sure that he helped me get my account back which I did probably two months later, but they deleted two years of my posts. Oh, no. So all the last two years, which was probably the best work I've done, just gone. Yeah. So that was a bit devastating, but at least I've got my account back and mm. I'm back in control. Do you have any idea how it was done? I'm not sure, but the only thing I can think of was I got a message from Instagram, inverted yep. commas, saying if you want to be a verified account, ah uh, yes, click on this link. And yep. I went, oh, that's nice. That's <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> and I honestly, that's the only thing I can think of that I've clicked mm. on it, that link and it's just taken me over by yeah, some stupid know. Nigerian person. Well, could be anywhere. Could be it, it had, you could be... see where it said oh, where yeah, they okay. were in Nigeria. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. 
Anyway, so I, I'm one of the lucky ones, I think, because a lot of people that I spoke to never got their accounts back. Yeah, I've heard from several people that hacked in the last couple of years and they've just had either no response at all from Meta or Instagram mm. at, at all or the response has been oh, so sad to yeah. make another account. I know, and that's basically what you have to do and you lose all that effort that you've made for the last however many years and it's yeah. such a shame. Yeah. It's the, uh, for me, I think it, I'm less worried about personally about my follower count. I'm more worried about the personal contacts that I've made because oh. one of the things I do is actually use social media channels to contact people to yeah. ask them to be on this show for yeah. one. So I've got a whole raft of info there that I'd be devastated if I. Yeah. Well, it. absolutely. I've made a lot of. Friends, Insta friends, I suppose you'd call them. Yeah. And it's a nice community that I'd built up. And a lot of people, if they followed, if they unfollowed me, I could follow, like I could get them back. But if yeah. they blocked me, then I couldn't see them. So a lot of my closer friends blocked me. And so I've been struggling to try and get, try and contact get them. them to come back into contact. But yeah, it's a tricky situation once that happens to you. Definitely, definitely. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's a, de definitely something that everyone should be aware of. That I Instagram, I don't think, will ever contact you and say, hey, I want to make you a, a verified person. Certainly I've not, learned that now. <laughs> not, not by clicking on a link anyway. <laughs> no. I, I just give you a blue tick and happy day. Well, actually, yeah. no, now they want you to pay for it. Pay for it. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh. Yeah, which I, I personally won't be doing. No, me neither. I won't be either. And if that drives down my engagement, I'm not really going to be overly upset because there are other social media channels out there that yeah. uh, I'm, I'm still, yeah. you know, getting fairly strong engagement from. I know. And I don't, really, I don't really care how many followers I've got. I just like to engage with people. And that's the main part is. That's just, exactly it. Yeah. 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 I guess, when did you start your, your your Instagram or your social media journey? I think probably around 2017. Yeah, okay. I think, yeah. And then we sold the business just after that and, and that's when I got into photography. So that allowed me to have a creative outlet for what I was doing. Yeah, um, so it's a, it's a fair old time to have lost work and everything. Yeah, it's, and it was more a record of what I've done yeah. Um, too, because it was the journey that I'd been on and it was all, all recorded there. So I could at any time go back and have a look at it. And it was just an, a nice way to store memories almost as well. So, yeah. That's one, one of the reasons that they purported to start it, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, imagine how many millions and millions of photographs there are out there. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. What do you do in terms of your work in, other than posting it on Instagram? Do you print it? Do you do anything else with it? I sometimes print rarely. I'm in a, a photography club. I'm in the Mossman Photography Club. Okay. So there's competitions to enter and I do enter a few competitions, but mainly just I like to go out and shoot and edit and share. I don't have any real goals other than that yeah, yeah. no that, that's I, I think that's great because every everyone does it for their own reasons and whether it's sharing it with some other person or whether it's trying to make money out of it I think mm. you know, they're all valid reasons and yeah you know, from my perspective if sharing is what you want to do then it's great yeah I'd love to print some work and do some big prints but I've got nowhere to put it We've downsized our house, so we yeah. haven't got so many walls anymore, and yeah. it's expensive. Yeah, um, it's not, I, not, not cheap to get a good size print. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, just. Have you ever hit a creative wall, and if so, how did you handle it? Actually, I find it difficult if I've been travelling, and I've gone through all my photos. Like I've just done the Turkey tour, and I've come back, and I've gone through all my photos, and edited them all and, and getting them ready for a book maybe because I like to do a travel book when I come back from a trip. And then I go, oh, now what? 
I've been in Sydney for the last three years just yeah. shooting the same thing and it's, oh, I've done all that, what am I going to do? <laughs> and it, it does take a little while to get the mojo back and Definitely. get back into it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. What, what techniques have you used to, to try and do that? Probably mainly just look at Instagram and see what other people are doing and think, okay. oh, I should be out there doing that. <laughs> and so, Yeah, that sort of inspires you to get back out. And going out and shooting with my friends, that's inspiring to, yeah, eventually you do get your mojo back and you do go, wow, Sydney's a fantastic place and there's so much to shoot here. Yeah, but, I've yeah. definitely never, I don't think I'll ever get tired of it. I mean, I no. a lot of places that, that I want to shoot as well, but I, I still haven't plumbed the depths to... Yeah, I think we're uh, very lucky to live here and have so oh, much totally, to... totally, totally, yeah. To shoot, one, so... One of the most photogenic cities and the number of beaches that are around, yeah. the mountains not far away. Where do you like to shoot best? Me? I'm probably happiest knee-deep on a rock shelf somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Parameta is definitely a favourite. I mm. go quite a bit. The reason being is that every time you go there, it looks a bit different. Yes, true. The amount of sand that shifts around and the rocks and you have the green on the, on, on the rocks, that the algae that some years disappears for six months and then comes back. And, yeah, so every time I've been there, it's looked a bit different. And it's conditions. a scary place to go to in the dark before yeah. the sun rises because yeah. it's – You've got to walk down all those steps and then walk along and then that, there's that big cliff and it yeah. can be a bit scary. Yeah, it can be, it can be a bit intimidating, particularly in high tide with, with a big swell running. It, it can be a bit intimidating if not sure about getting out on a rock shelf. I use a pair of neoprene rock mm. boots. I've actually got cleats on the bottom of it, which yeah. sort of gives you a bit of extra grip. But it's funny, there's some people that swear by bare feet. Yeah. So, I'm a bit iffy about walking around on rocks. <laughs> no, I don't like I don't like bare feet. I wear an old pair of sand shoes, which probably is hopeless. I know sort of shoes have been on my list for a very long time. I just haven't bothered to buy any yet. So yeah, no, for me it's uh, it, it's a must have, and then they're not that expensive. I think the no. pair I've got cost me like fifteen twenty bucks in yeah. BCF or somewhere like yeah. that. Yeah, I'll have to do it. Yeah, just find a fishing shop and you, you should be able to pick up a mm, pet. Mm, true, yeah. true. <laughs> I will. But there's always another lens to buy and another filter. To yeah, see. I was going to come to that. What piece of kit can't you live without? Oh, I think I've just recently, because I've just recently upgraded to the 5 mm. and I was still using all my old lenses. And so I've just recently bought the 24 to 105. Yep. And, uh, yeah, yep. I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Does the job. I don't I've think the it. weight is any less than my old gear. It's still as heavy as ever. I, <laughs> I'm getting weaker. I don't know. but <laughs> oh, I think Canon's renowned for putting pretty pretty thick glass in there. <laughs> yeah. I amount. love it, but it it's, <laughs> does my back in. Yeah. yeah. What do you see as being the biggest challenge facing photography right now? Oh, obviously this AI thing. Yeah? You're a proponent or a you're against? I think it's incredible, but I, it's got to have its place and photography has got to have its place. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think people should be putting AI-generated images on photography platforms. Um, In terms of social media and, yeah. I... Unless they say this is AI-generated, which most yeah. people tend to do. Thank goodness. But yeah, I think it's an incredible thing that's happened. Wow. Uh, yeah, but... In terms of generating the images, I think that's amazing. My my personal feeling is a lot of, yes, you have to come up with the concept of what it is that you're trying to create an image from. And yes, you can feed it your own, or depending on the platform you use, you can feed it your own images and have it generate from images that you've trained it on. But if you haven't done that and all you're doing is typing in a few words, you're leaning very heavily on the people that program the AI in the first place. Yeah, from yeah. From my perspective. And I don't know how how much credit I'd be willing to take to say, hey, look at this amazing image that somebody else made. Because Yes, that's right. I, I, I mean, typed some words. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the concept may be yours, but nothing else is. 
Exactly. Yeah, everything, as in it's saying, Rosie, go and take me a photo of the Matterhorn, please. Here's some money, off you go. And the concept I've got in my head, yes, I can see the Matterhorn and that's what I want. What you come back with is not going to be mine. It's going to be yeah. your interpretation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You've shot. Absolutely. And it's to me, it's like that. <laughs> mm. I'm sure it's fun to do. I haven't actually ever used it. Yet, I've, so. I've had a dabble and it, it creates some interesting images. I had a play around with it. Uh, the first, I think one of the first ones that I did was actually show me something in the, in, in, do a scene in the style of J.M. Turner, the, oh, um, yes. the fantastic. Mm. And it came back with some Turnerish looking images. Whether Turner would have been happy. But how did you feel? Did you feel like you created that? Or no, I don't think... feel. I, I didn't feel yeah. any sense of achievement in yeah. it, at all, other no. than oh yeah, I did what I asked it to do. Mm. I wasn't I, to be honest, I wasn't overly happy with any of the images. Mm. In, in... And I think also, if you're out there taking your landscape photography, you're not just taking a photo. You're experiencing oh. the whole 360 degree. Uh, the weather and the light and the exactly. grass under your feet. Water rushing around your, around, around your ankles if you're yeah. standing on, on So a, it's more than thing. just an image. It's just the whole thing. Getting out there and shooting is a, a, a beautiful experience. Yeah, in terms of landscape, I don't think it'll ever replace that and people and, and their desire to be creative will always be there. In terms of commercial advertising art i can yeah. see i can definitely see photographers losing a bit of ground yeah. there because yeah. you know, a, a corporate art director instead or a advertising executive can type in a few words and say this is exactly what i want and if it's not exactly what he wants he'll have another go and yeah. own until he gets what he wants which, yeah yeah you know, would cost him a lot more if he was charging, uh, getting a photographer to do the mm, work. Mm, yeah. So I, I, can, I can see that maybe. Yeah. Yes. That, yeah. That'll be a whole new ball game for the advertisers, I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. And then there's the, 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 the word and verbiage bit around it. I, I haven't really played around with that a lot. Um, but I've heard that some photographers are now doing that to come up with captions for their photos. So they're feeding a photo in and getting AI to actually generate a caption. Oh, really? Which is... Oh, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that I'm playing around with is speech to text because I end up with the audio out of these podcasts Right. One of the one of the ideas that I've got to extend things. I haven't really talked about this to, to anybody, but I've, I've been, mainly because I've only just started looking at it in the last week. But turning some of these discussions into articles that I could potentially then sell on to magazines and so forth, yeah. using the AI. So I feed it the audio file and it spits out the right. the transcription. I've got to say the attempts that it's made so far uh, maybe it's my australian accent and some of my guests <laughs> attempts that it struggles with but uh, yeah some of the words that come out and not the words that were said <laughs> yes you'd have to absolutely check everything oh yeah i'm not i'm not just leaving it to that but at least i guess if nothing else it gives you a starting point and, and mm body mm -hmm. that you can then trim down and, and turn into something yes it does make some tasks a lot quicker everybody said absolutely that'd drive you up the wall <laughs> yeah particularly with i mean your episode 86 with 86 episodes <laughs> yay 86 yeah anyway <laughs> where do you see the future going is it more ai is it less ai is it people doing their own thing Oh, I think there's a place for everything. The world continues to change and develop and hopefully AI will fit in and not take over as it does in some of those movies that you see. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think I think people will always be more creative than a machine and uh, yeah. there's so much more emotion in an image that a person can create than a machine can create as far as I'm concerned and so much more individuality. 
I think, by getting photographers to take photos than a machine to create things. Yeah, yeah. hopefully it will we'll continue to take photos forever. Yeah. I'll, I, for one, welcome our robot overlords. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I certainly hope, hope, hope that's the, the case. I don't see, as I say, I don't see people giving up on it and mm. deciding, oh, the images from AI are just so good. I want to go to Japan or I want to go yeah. to Iceland and I want yeah. to experience that place. Yeah. I don't just want to type in some words, show me a picture of festival. Yeah. I know. You don't want to sit at your computer. <laughs> yeah. Sit at your computer and not go out and experience the no, world. That's, and, yeah. that's, that's not what I like doing. I like mm. editing, but mm. I like editing because I've been there because it helps yes. me relive the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so do you make books or what do you do with your books? Yeah, I do. I, I normally make books. Usually if I go overseas, the, that trip turns into the higher quality photography that I try to <laughs> aspire to, <laughs> I'd say I always succeed, but the better quality stuff, as well as, as my wife says, it doesn't matter. It's just a snapshot, put it in the book. We make those sorts of books, which is a bit of a hybrid. I've got a couple of other books that I, I do have that are specifically nicer photography, but I've also got a couple of prints floating around and I am trying to sell prints. I've got them on the website. So Grantsmember.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go there if you want to buy a print. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what's your favourite thing about being a photographer? Uh, I think it's uh, getting out there and being in the moment. No matter what moment it is, there's something really incredible about it yeah. and yeah I, because I, when I travel I do a lot of research about where we're going to go and I'm dragging my husband here there and everywhere he's not so keen about getting up at the crack of dawn but even he's impressed with what we've seen since I've been doing photography because we have explored places that not other people wouldn't go to yeah at times that's perfect for the scene so I think that's the thing that I really enjoy the most is actually getting out there and experiencing amazing places yeah no, yeah. that's fantastic yeah what do you like to do when you're not out shooting uh, <laughs> I don't know be with my family I like watching movies I like reading books I don't like cooking much no okay. no I'm not a big cook yeah. So is that um, your husband's purview or do you No, just... <laughs> neither of us do. <laughs> I'm not a bad cook, but I'm, I would rather be out photographing than cooking. Fair enough. Fair I've got a lot of friends who are very good cooks and I always feel quite inadequate in that department, but, hey, they can't take a photo like I can. No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah, there's lots to do. It just depends on what time it is and, yeah. Sure, sure. Who are the photographers that I should be talking to on the podcast? I would definitely recommend Mike Langford and Jackie Rankin. Yep. They are great friends of mine and I, I think they're fantastic photographers. Ricardo de Cuna, he's a yeah. brilliant guy. Yep. I think you've spoken to Wanda Craswell, Wanda. Yeah, I've spoken to Wanda, yeah. Sandra Dan. I haven't, haven't had her on, yeah. She's, I've done a lot of composite work with her over COVID and she's an amazing artist. And Sue Ellen Sadie Cook, she's another incredible composite artist as well that I've become friends with. And mm. I don't know, who else? I think he spoke to Stefan a little while yeah, ago. Stefan, He's great. Yeah. Timothy and Robin Moon. No, I haven't got them on the yeah. list. But, yeah. So they're members of the Mossman Camera Club. And they're very inspirational. They've, they've had an incredible journey in photography, especially Robin. She's just been down to Antarctic for two trips and she's been over to Canada and Pennsylvania photographing snowy owls and things like that. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's doing amazing stuff. And Timothy's a great photographer as well. So, yeah, there's a few people. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. 
Well, I've got one question that uh, everyone needs to know the answer to. Do you like pineapple on pizza? I don't actually choose to have pineapple on pizza, but if it's there, I'm pleasantly surprised. You're not picking it off. No, I'm not picking it off. It's a little sweet treat that you get. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind it. Excellent. Thank you very much for taking the time to tell me a little bit more about yourself, Rosie. It's been Thanks so much, Grant. Getting to know you. Where can people find what you do? Oh, mainly Instagram. I've got my Rosie photo with an F, R-O-S-I-E-F-O-T-O. And then I've got Rosie Photo Art, where I do my creative sort of work. Rosie Photo Aqua is where I do a lot of seascapes and water photography. So that's my three little accounts. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Rosie. Okay. Thanks so much, Grant. Pleasure. Thanks again for listening to Landscape Photography World. I hope you enjoyed the show and keep listening because I'll be joined by some great guests in upcoming episodes. You can find my work in this podcast at grantswinburnphotography.com. I'm also on Vero, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. I'm Grant Swinburne. Hope to see you out shooting soon. Thank you.